Welcome to our channel. We are Sophie and Philippe, two professional chefs and regenerative farmers. Currently, we are setting up our second regenerative farm in Portugal. On this channel, we take you along on the farm's development and we show you how we grow, cook and preserve nutrient-dense, regeneratively grown food. In a time where the food we're eating is literally killing us, the most powerful and impactful action one could take is to consume clean and delicious food. Let's grow it, let's cook it, let's do it. So in this episode, we're going to get a little bit more personal maybe than we usually do. And I'm going to share with you the story of why we came to Portugal. Besides, obviously, the wonderful sun that is shining in my face, there are other reasons. And for you to understand the entire story, let's first dive into what our lives look like before we came to Portugal. So before the farming chefs, we had a regenerative farm in Italy, where we also had a farm-to-table restaurant, and we served our own meat, eggs, veggies, herbs, and it was a wonderful place. Philippe and I became parents in Italy. We have two beautiful daughters, and we just had a great run there, producing amazing food. We had great family and friends living nearby. So all in all, not a shabby life. But then COVID hit. And for us, that was a really rough time because we had our little circular economy in which we were basically producing everything that we were selling in our own place, in our own restaurant. That just meant a logistical nightmare because now we had to slaughter a lot of animals and we had to figure out what we're going to do with all of this production that normally we sold in our restaurant. Now, I think the lockdown and Corona was a terrible time for everyone, but if there was to be pointed out a silver lining, it was that we, for the first time in a long time, actually had way more time on our hands than we had ever had which means that we could really reflect on where we were what we wanted and how we felt about everything so that is what we did we had many talks about what life meant how fast it was all going if there were any opportunities that were lying ahead that we should grab and out of those conversations came forward that philippe really longed for Portugal because he had left very young and he would love to spend more time with his own mother and introduce our girls to Portugal and what it means to be Portuguese and get exposed to the language more. So that was one of the conclusions we drew. But we also were toying with this idea of a new adventure as a very good client of us who became a very close friend had actually made clear that he was willing to invest in us and that he believed in our potential and if we ever were to start a new project that he would happily back us. So with that in the back of our minds we felt that there was an opportunity for growth and new adventure. And another thing that came into play really was the sense of ownership we were longing for and a place on earth to really call our own. As our then business was situated on rented land, so coming here then was solidified in the moment that Philippe's uncle called us and asked us if we wanted to buy the house of his grandmother, which we had, they were going to put up for sale. And they did so very, very cheap price. And before they did so, they called us and said, well, before we put it on the market, we wanted to know if you guys might be interested because Philippe, you spent some years there when you were younger and maybe you would want it as a little vacation home or something. So when that phone call came to me and I think to Philippe as well, it sort of felt as if you believe in those sort of things, a sign from the heavens. And that is when we made the decision that this was a great opportunity for growth. Let's start a second farm. Let's put everything we've learned in our first farm into practice, building up our ideal little paradise. A lot of people probably thought we were crazy. And truth be told, we probably are a little crazy. Um, and I think that has to do with the fact that Philippe and I both just strongly believe that life is short and it should be an adventure in which you try to, in Dutch I would say, you employ your talente, you need to go after your talents and try to develop them as much as you can. We are very passionate about growing and about food and we see real power and healing in this regenerative movement. So we decided why not start this second regenerative farm from scratch. And a little place that we can call our own and also share this journey 
with the global community of you guys on YouTube. So thank you very much for all your support so far. And here we are, and we are loving, loving life. <laughs> now we've got many more exciting plans for this place that I can't share with you guys yet, but let me tell you, I'm extremely excited about them. So there you have it. That's why we came to Portugal. Enough on that. Let's get into all the farm development of this week and let me show you what we've done. So that time has arrived, thinning out the tomatoes. The difficult decision is which ones to take, which ones to leave. Well, I know I need seven of each plant of these tomatoes. I'm going to do for 13, 14, 15, so you always have some extra, but I want to leave a space that is enough for them to grow until we rip them out of the ground and transplant them into the bee garden. Let's thin them out. So I thinned them out, I left between 12 and 14, now they have space to grow, see you next time. Good night little planty plants. <laughs> As mentioned in one of our episodes at the beginning of the year, we have decided to bite the bullet and to deal with the compaction problem on certain areas of our farm. We looked, but unfortunately could not find anyone with a key line plow in our local area due to our shallow soils. So a ripper is the next best thing. So we're here today with the neighbor to uncompact the soil on this part of the farm. Uh, he's passing the reaper, but he's already made me sign that it's very hard, so the reaper not even goes deep enough. But he's gonna pass twice, I'm sure of it. And yeah, let's see how it goes. This is the place where the compost was dropped. So there was a, a big digger here, like a retro, 
So that compact a lot the soil in this part of the farm and we really need to do this. I hate to see land like this, but it's a bad that has to come for a better good. We're going up. We're going to try to put the flat spot upstairs. Let's see what we can do. This area has a ton of uneven ground due to bad tilling by a previous owner. Even though this is an intervention that in the long run will benefit both us as well as the soil, it is still hard to watch the ground being ripped open. I know this is necessary, but I cannot help but hate the look of this ripped open ground. A key line plow would not have worked here though, as we are on top of the hill here and the ground is just too shallow. Also, there are many granite rocks scattered all around. Yeah, so this side went great, the soil is much drier there, so it was easy for the tractor to pass and to make it flatter. All the bumps are gone, I'm happy next year we're gonna have chickens here. Peace out. Somebody's burning something in the village. A few weeks ago the vines were pruned and we decided to burn the cuttings and give back the ashes to the vines. For that we had to light up the bunch. Right, now we're going to give some ashes back to the plants. Giving the ashes back to the vines is a way of giving back nutrients and can also help against pests such as snails. We do not really have any pest problems in the vines, so we are doing it mainly just to return the nutrients. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do the, <laughs> we gonna do the net for the piece today. We're gonna use for the first time biodegradable net. This because every year it is a pain in the peep to take everything from that plastic net and then throw the net to the garbage and put the rest in the compost. So it's hours cleaning that. We don't want to do that anymore. So we're gonna use this. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's better for the health of the planet. So I'm gonna get the chainsaw, we're gonna cut the poles of the garden and of this inside fence 
all at the same height, so we have a beautiful view and Sophie gets relaxed. I need to make the mixture of things. Purple. Different gas station, different colors. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. So a chainsaw takes gasoline. Go. Got the tools? Let's go. So what? We're done here. Let's go to the other side. Let's go! Push me and then just touch me till I can get my satisfaction. 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 Push me and then just hurt me till I can get my satisfaction. 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 So we're done, we cut all the poles to the same height, 1 meter 34 to be exactly. There was a little problem there with the measuring of that one. We cut off, I cut off two centimeters more, but the rest is all the same. So, so will be happy, I'm happy, everybody's happy, Lot is happy. So let's go. This was also the week that we got rid of the last batch of chickens that we had running around on the farm. So we slaughtered about 30 chickens in total. It was a hell of a day and it kept on going. In the end we decided to chop most of the carcasses up and that means we have a freezer full of thighs, breast, chicken wings and a lot of chicken stock. It's been a year developing this farm and even that we had experience already with farm because this is the second farm that we're developing, uh, we knew exactly what we wanted to do, we knew exactly how to do it. The only thing was the new thing, the YouTube channel. So we had to document everything and we did, really, we did it quite poorly in the beginning because especially me, mentality of is this to do, let's do it immediately, let's not do it today and not wait for tomorrow. So when you're documenting things, it has to be planned in a different manner. And sometimes you see things that need to be done, but you just have to prepare yourself before to document it and doing it at the same time. Uh, so that was a big problem for me, my mentality, I think. Uh, but yeah, we're here one year later and we clean the whole farm, we fence the farm, uh, we plant all the trees, uh, we have the animals running, the chickens, the sheep, uh, yeah, we have the gardens built, so that, that was that mentality of let's do it, uh, that brought us here. Um, for sure it could be documented a little bit better in the beginning but i'm working on it so i'm here today in front of you telling what was the developments of last year and yeah i think that was it just getting used to a camera in front of your face all the time is not something so easy as it looks like for maybe for me because i'm not a natural so 
I leave it for you guys, the natural ones. Definitely one of the most used phrases in the first months were Why did you do that? Well, now we don't have it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to do it. <laughs> that was it for another episode, folks. We hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one. The Farming Chefs. Peace out. <laughs>